Welcome to Junior High School Math Series. In this video presentation, let us discuss Proving Triangles Congruent by SSS Congruence Postulate. You have learned that two triangles are congruent if their six corresponding parts are congruent. In this presentation, we will show that we can have congruent triangles without having all the corresponding parts of the two triangles congruent. The postulate that we're going to discuss will indicate the condition for any two triangles to be congruent. The SSS postulate. The SSS postulate states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. In triangle ABC and triangle DEF, if side AB is congruent to side DE, side BC is congruent to side EF, and side AC is congruent to side DF, then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And these three corresponding sides are enough to state that the two triangles are congruent by the SSS postulate. The SSS postulate is sometimes called the side-side-side pattern. Let us have example number one. Based on the markings in the following figure, which triangles are congruent? In geometry, we use special markings to show that parts or figures are congruent. So for our answer, we will observe that Segment NM and segment QM have the same markings. Therefore, we say segment NM is congruent to segment QM. Also, we see that segment MO and segment MP have the same markings. Therefore, segment MO is congruent to segment MP. There is another pair with the same markings. These are segment NO or segment ON and segment PQ. Hence, we have triangle MNO and triangle MQP with corresponding sides congruent. Therefore, we say that triangle NMO is congruent to triangle QMP by the SSS postulate. Let us have example number two. What additional information is or are needed to conclude that two triangles in the figure are congruent? We are given segment AM is congruent to segment SH, also segment AS and segment MH bisect each other at point T. For our suggested answer, the two triangles in the figure are triangle AMT and triangle SHT. Since we are given segment AM and segment SH are congruent, then we need to show that segment MT and segment HT are congruent. Also, segment AT and segment ST are congruent so that the two triangles, triangle AMT and triangle SHT, are congruent by the SSS postulate. It is known that AS and MH bisect each other at point T. Therefore, by the definition of segment bisector, MT is congruent to HT and AT is congruent to ST. Hence, we have the three sides of triangle AMT congruent to the corresponding three sides of triangle SHT. Therefore, the two triangles are congruent. Example number three. Find the value of x that will make the two triangles congruent by the SSS postulate. For our answer, observe that 
in the figure, we have triangle NET and triangle IXF with corresponding sides congruent. NE is congruent to IX with measurement equal to 12 units. Also, NT and side FI of the other triangle have the same measurement. Therefore, these are congruent. Then, we need to show that segment ET or side ET of triangle NET and side XF of triangle FIX are congruent so that the two triangles are congruent by the SSS postulate. By the definition of congruent segments, these two segments have the same measure. For our equation, we have 4x minus 3. The length of segment FX is equal to 3x plus 2. That is the length of segment ET. Now, solving for x, we subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. Also, add 3 to both sides. Then, we will have 4x minus 3x is equal to 2 plus 3. 4x minus 3x is x and 2 plus 3 is 5. Therefore, x must be equal to 5 so that the two triangles in the figure are congruent by the SSS postulate. Let us have example number 4. Complete the proof of the following. Given segment LO is congruent to segment LE, segment OV is congruent to segment EV. Prove the triangle LOV is congruent to triangle LEV. Let us have the proof. So we are given in statement number 1, segment LO is congruent to segment LE. We have a missing reason. Statement number 2, segment OV is congruent to segment EV also. The result is missing. And statement number 3, that is what we need to supply. And that is by the reason of reflexive property. In statement number 4, the other triangle is missing. Triangle LOV is congruent to what triangle by the SSS postulate? We will observe that we have two triangles formed in the figure, that is triangle LOV and triangle LEV. We are already given two pairs of congruent segments or congruent sides, LO of triangle LOV and LE of triangle LEV. Also, OV of triangle LOV and segment EV of triangle LEV. And these are two pairs of corresponding sides. So by the SSS postulate, we need only to supply the third pair of corresponding sides of the two triangles. Let us complete the proof. Segment LO is congruent to segment LE. That is already given. Hence, our reason is given. Segment OV is congruent to segment EV. Also, that is given. What we're talking about earlier is the third pair of corresponding sides. Notice that in the figure, LV or segment LV is a side of triangle LOV. And also, segment LV is a side of triangle LEV. Therefore, that is the missing pair of corresponding sides. LV of triangle LOV and segment LV of triangle LEV are congruent by the reflexive property. We now have three pairs of corresponding sides of the two triangles. On the left-hand side of the congruency statement are the sides of triangle LOV. On the right-hand side of the congruent statements, we have the sides of triangle LEV. Therefore, we say, that triangle LOV is congruent to triangle LEV by the SSS postulate. Let us have example number 5. This time we're going to write a complete proof. We are given the figure, given that segment DR is congruent to segment AM, 
E is the midpoint of both segment DA and segment RM. Now we're going to prove the triangle DRE is congruent to triangle MAE. Let us write the proof. We need the statements and reason for our formal proof. In writing the proof, we always start with a given statement. Then we start with E is the midpoint of both DA and segment RM. That is a given statement. From statement number one, we write another statement in the form of if-then statement. We say, if E is the midpoint of segment DA and segment RM, then what do we conclude? Looking at the figure, if E is the midpoint of segment DA, then what we can conclude is that DA was divided into two congruent segments, and these are DE and segment AE. Also, in the figure, E is the midpoint of segment RM. Then we can conclude that segment RM was divided into two congruent segments, which are segment RE and segment ME. So, statement number one, if E is the midpoint of segment DA and segment RM, then is statement number two, we say, segment DE is congruent to segment AE. Also, segment RE is congruent to segment ME. And the reason to that is the definition of midpoint. Now observe that we already have two pairs of corresponding parts of two triangles in the figure that are congruent. Segment DE and segment RE are sides of triangle DRE, while segment AE and segment ME are two sides of triangle MAE. Hence, we need only the third pair of corresponding sides of these two triangle and notice that it is already given that dr is congruent to segment am hence we already have three pairs of corresponding sides of the two triangles that are congruent number three by the way is given so we say that triangle dre is congruent to triangle mae by the sss postulate That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons.